13th time as a professional. He is the least experienced of all the fighters in Boxino 2014. His opponent, much more experienced. Peter Petrov speaks fluent Russian and Spanish. He's 33-4-2 and two, and an impressive victory in his first fight in the quarterfinals. What do these fighters need to do to win? It's time for Teddy's Fight Plan, brought to you by Corona Extra. All right, let's start with Mr. Rudd. The taller man, as you said, the least experienced in this tournament. Use your long jab in your legs to go on the outside and turn southpaw in spots. That's not a bad idea, since you know how to do that. And for Petrov, get close and bang to the body and then go upstairs to the head. Let's take a look at exactly what I'm talking about. Here you see Rudd doing it the right way. Turn it southpaw, confusing his opponent there. Using that long jab to keep separation, then pick spots, and then using those legs to get out of dodge a little bit and keep that separation. Here you see Petrov in close, downstairs, and then upstairs, chopping the tree. Upstairs, downstairs, back upstairs. Both guys know what their identities are. Now let's see who goes and uses it. A fantastic opening bout tonight between Miguel Gonzalez and right, Fernando Carcamo. Now our second semifinal. Earlier. You guys are professionals. I expect you to act like them. Want a good, clean fight. Let's go back to your corner and let's go to work. And we expect an all-action fight in these two respective lightweights. First fights in Boxino. Peter Petrov, 82 punches around. Chris Rudd, 115 around. That's over 200 punches combined. The average in the lightweight division is about 120 per round, Teddy. Yeah, well, I talked about the height. I talked about the jab of Rudd. No sense of being tall if you can't use that jab to maintain that tallness, if that's a correct word, against a shorter guy like Petrov. But let's not forget, it's easy to say it's up to the jab and the reach, but it's also really incumbent on Rudd, as I said in this perform like a champ or fight like a champ you got to use those legs to keep the body in position to use that long jab those legs have to get you out of dodge they have to keep that separation to be able to really use that wingspan properly and right now you get near the ropes you got problems and just what we talked about petrov getting in close banging downstairs banging upstairs and a happy birthday to Peter Petrov who turns 31 today he's not happy yet not happy yet unless he wins it's Ted his birthday Teddy Atlas is calling his fight on national television it's a great day and you're so right he's just hoping <laughs> Petrov's hoping he has two things to celebrate in about a half hour one is he's going to the finals baby and the other is well he can celebrate his birthday a happy one, not just a birthday. We all have birthdays. They're not all happy, Todd. <laughs> the older you get, the less fun they seem to be. Listen, you, you talked about early, rightfully so, about Rudd being the least experienced fighter remaining in this tournament, even going into this tournament. What Rudd hopes for is, people hope for, is that, you know, we point out the, again, the pro experience on the favor of Petrov over Rudd, but Rudd has 200 amateur fights, Petrov only 30. So, you know, don't feel sorry for Rudd too much. Rudd has all that amateur experience. He needs to show that to make up for the lack of pro experience. And he can. Petrov has been in a huge fight in his career, a junior welterweight title fight in September 2011, losing to Marcos Maidana, a fight he was dropped three times in before it was stopped. Yeah, Madonna ran him over like a truck running over a Volkswagen. Just too physically strong. But not the case here. Rudd is not too physically strong. What Petrov wants to do is be the stronger guy like that. Nice overhand right connects by Petrov. There's opportunities to catch Rudd stepping back. After he throws that left hand, doesn't cover fast enough, doesn't test hot water with that left hand. When he goes back, you step with him, you fill that gap. You can catch him with that right hand or with a left hook. A reminder to score this fight right now on our ESPN Friday Night Fights Facebook page. Round one of our second semifinal in the books. This 
This is for the players. This is for the rule breakers. This is for the next gen renegades. Touch me, I'm sick. This is infamous second son. Only on PS4. Touch me, I'm sick. Lots of guys, hair loss can be a real worry. The Belgravia Centre can help. Visit belgraviacentre.com, specialising in nothing but hair loss. Try to please you, you know. We said the fight plan that Petro had to get inside, go downstairs and upstairs. He did so early. And he also caught Rudd stepping back with that left hand low. You know, if you're going to use that jab, you're the taller man. Well, you better get out at the right distance. Rudd getting out from a little too close. Petro able to close that gap and catch him on the way out. That's exactly what you talk about when you say catch somebody going. Petrov caught Rudd going, and he's going to look to catch him going out all night long if he gets opportunities. Petrov told us that he needs to bring the fight to Rudd. I have to get in close and punish him, and that's what he's done so far. He's been like a Russian rock and sock and robot thus far, all up in Rudd's grill. Yeah, Rudd's got to be like a bunch of gnats, a bunch of mosquitoes ruining your picnic. Throwing all those jabs, those tap punches, Keeping you busy, keeping control at distance, and staying off the ropes. You know how those bugs can really bug you in the summer when you... Mosquitoes are the size of cats down there. Well, they can carry you away. I mean, right now, Rudd, really, he's just trying to buzz Petrov a little bit. On the outside, keep him frustrated a little bit, keep him reaching, and then tie up in the inside like he's doing here, Rudd. Because Petrov's the guy that doesn't want to get tied up in the inside. Petro's the stronger guy, the better body shot, the better body puncher. Petro should be really looking to keep himself untangled on the inside while Rudd's going to look to tangle him up. You wouldn't know it by the snow outside, but opening day of baseball season is right around the corner. Opening night Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. It's the Dodgers and the Padres. Big, big, big step up in class here tonight for Rudd. But he did it the last fight. In the beginning of the tournament, his first fight in the tournament. Made a big step up, made a big splash. Won the fight. He's stepping up again in quality of opposition with Petro. Petro has fought the much better opposition throughout his career. He's ready for fights. Rudd, as I said, only his last fight he stepped up. But Rudd, 11 of his 14 opponents have had losing records. That's a lot of opponents that you were fighting, real opponents. You're not fighting an opponent tonight. You're fighting a live wire, a guy who's going to bring it. Well, Rudd certainly has plenty of moral support. Seven siblings, four sisters, three brothers. He's married with three children, two girls, and six-year-old Chris Jr., who's watching at home right now in Covington, Tennessee. But they're probably not enjoying what they're seeing thus far as Petrov has, for the most part, imposed his will. Yeah, for the most part, good point. And the reason he's imposed his will, if he has, is geography. For the most part, Petrov has gotten a location that suits him better. Being a stronger guy, getting in close. A right hand connects there from Petrov as Rudd does his best to answer. Selected vegetables and richly spiced sauces with fluffy steamed rice. That's my delicious Uncle Ben's rice time. Begin with Ben. Your car is a sitting duck. It could be taken when you least expect it. Gone, just like that. You see, this guy is a professional, and he does it every day. One in three cars we check has a hidden past, and if you buy one that has outstanding finance or is stolen, you could lose the car and the money you paid. At HPICheck.com, we search millions of records to protect you from being out of pocket and at risk on the road. Before you buy, click HPICheck.com. The 
inaugural class of the New York State Boxing Hall of Fame will be inducted this weekend. Some notable names, Floyd Patterson, Howard Davis, and Teddy, I know it's a big honor for you to go in with your mentor, Custom Auto. Yeah, he's the reason why I'm here, I guess you could say. I mean, I, I was a young kid, 19 years old, went up to Catskill to be a fighter. Those plans changed, and then Cuz said, you know what, you can be a good trainer. And fortunately, at some point, I started listening to him, and <laughs> things kind of worked out pretty good, so it's always nice to go and be really thought of the, in those kind of ways, in those kind of terms by your peers, and be given that kind of honor, but it makes it even more special when you get a chance to go in with your mentor, so I'm very appreciative. Well, congratulations from, I'm sure, me and everyone here associated with Friday Night Fights on um, getting into the New York State Boxing Hall of Fame. This is actually the third class. How you didn't get in with the first class, I'll never know. Because you weren't on the board voting. <laughs> That's why. Thank you. Thank you to all all my people here that I work with every week. Well, you can't fault Rudd for trying here. He's trying to figure out Petrov, but right now, no answers. Well, the answer is to stay on the outside, but he doesn't have the power to really hold Petrov to keep him on the outside. And that's why you see Rudd falling inside, grabbing a little bit, trying to slow Petrov down. Right now, the referee's going to have something to say. Both of you guys, stop hugging. Hold up. The referee's Tell trying you. to help us out, help the fans out, get a cleaner fight. I like it. Let's grab it. Not a bad idea. He actually called it hugging, which is a nice nice thing to say. Yeah, well, a couple of big body shots and then upstairs for Petro. Yeah, Petro's doing better now because the referee told him not to hold. <laughs> that helped Petro, but I'm not so sure Rudd's happy about that. Because Petrov's a better guy on the inside. Shorter arms, a little stronger. And this is not where Rudd wants to be on the inside. A couple body shots got Rudd's attention. Now upstairs, and Rudd in big trouble in the corner here. And an uppercut, a well-timed uppercut, wouldn't be a bad idea for Petrov because Rudd now with that big, tall frame starting to shrink, starting to lean oh. forward and being exposed to those short shots of Petrov. What a right hand from Petrov who just won't stop throwing punches here. Yeah, Rudd is shrinking. I mean, really, and I'm not even joking. He's shorter than he was when this fight started. You know, he started almost six foot. Now he's about five, six. As he's crouched over, getting hurt by those body shots, and he's at the height of Petrov, and he's at the mercy of Petrov, too. Still 40 seconds to go. Rudd's exchanging here. This is not the smartest thing for him to do. He's going to lose that battle every time. Well, he's trying to hold him off. He's trying to fight fire with fire, and you're right. He's getting burnt a little. Will Petrov run out of steam here? That's the only hope Rudd's got. Rudd has never been knocked down as a professional in 14 fights. Look, I love the heart of Rudd. But the intellect, the fight plan is the wrong one right now. The heart is beautiful. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to get the respect of Petrov. But he needs to do that on the outside, not on the inside. Come on, let's go. Coming, baby. Oleg had become part of Orlov family. That is why his special toy for people who get car or home insurance or switch the energy so compare the market.com. Mm. Symbols! Coming, Oleg. <laughs> Again, in the fight plan, we said Petrov needed to put water in the basement and then go upstairs to the attic. The top floor run. Well, that's exactly what Petrov is doing. Again, water in the basement, downstairs, and then upstairs pays a dividend for Petrov. Chris Rudd cannot afford to donate his entire time as a boxing professional. He has a job, says he works 12 hours a day in a warehouse, then goes to the gym for three or four more hours 
hours. So you know he's not going to go home quietly. He will leave it all in the ring. And look at those power punches thus far. Petrov, complete domination. Yeah, you just said that Rudd... Oh, and the right hand connects. Rudd stayed on his feet somehow. Yeah, he's a game, game guy, but he's fighting again in the wrong geography. Rudd's legs are ready to go. Petrov sees the bullseye and is continuing. And now Rudd fighting back. Everything he's got. The only problem, Rudd's punches are wide. Petrov's are short and straight. And that means they're going to do that. They're going to get in. And it's going to make the referee do that. Stop the fight. Peter Petrov is headed to the Boxino Championship with an absolutely outstanding performance. Plenty of heart by Rudd, but the wrong fight plan. And maybe the wrong fight plan was forced on him because Petrov forced it on him. He physically and mentally forced it on him forced himself inside and gave Rudd no choice, at least in Rudd's mind. Rudd thought, I can't keep him outside. I'm not able to keep him outside. I got to try to do something inside. And it was the undoing for Rudd. Petrov with his 15th professional knockout. Chris Rudd stopped for the first time in his career. But what a show from Petrov. He was good in his quarterfinal fight against Fedor Papazov. He was great tonight. Yeah, Petrov imposed himself mentally and physically. Inside to the body, Petrov, and there's a big right hand upstairs. Downstairs, and then upstairs. You're bending, so where does Rudd think it's coming? Downstairs, it comes upstairs, and Rudd takes that right hand clean. The end of the fight right here. Petrov, where he wants to be, in the location he wants. Straight punches, wide punches from Rudd, and a stoppage, and a good stoppage by the referee. Let's go now into the ring for the particulars. Here's Ray Flores. Boxing fans, the end comes at 51 seconds of the third round. A referee in charge, Billy Johnson, has waved off this contest for your winner, by technical knockout and moving on to the finals of the Boxino 2014 lightweight tournament, Peter Elzar Petrov. So Petrov advances to face Fernando Carcamo in our Boxino Championship. We'll get Teddy's thoughts on that showdown on May 23rd. We'll be back to Newtown, North Dakota after this. Hello and welcome to the Rugby Forecast. Look out for some...